In history, some people have in their unique way made a significant contribution to the timeline of a nation. Unfortunately, their exploits are often quickly forgotten and underappreciated. For Guyana, one such person is Yusi Koyana. Cue title sequence. Hello friends and welcome to another episode of For the Culture Guyana. Today I'm going to tell you about a living piece of Guyanese history. He's statesman, educator, author, poet, playwright, activist, the sage of Buxton, Mr. Yusi Kweyana. But before we get into that, just in case you forgot, be sure to subscribe to us and hit that thumbs up button. Yusi Kwayana was born on April 4th, 1925 at Lusignan, East Coast Demerara as Sidney Evanson King. At a young age, his family moved to Buxton where he became a very well-known and respected member of the village, hence the Sage of Buxton name you know, in his later years. At the age of 15, he became a teacher. If that wasn't impressive enough, in 1956, he founded the County High School in Buxton at the age of 31. However, his first brush with national politics came when he joined the Political Action Committee. This was an organization founded by the late Chetty and Janet Jagan, who both of whom would go on to become presidents of Guyana in their later years. For persons who didn't know, Janet Jagan was an American. Yes, she was born in Chicago, Illinois. This means that Guyana actually had a American female president before America even did. So, the PAC was the forerunner to the People's Progressive Party. And that party is also a party that he, Yusi Kawanya, helped to establish in 1950. And in April 1953, while still a British colony, Guyana held an internal election in which the PPP won. Yusi then became a member of Dr. Jagan's cabinet, serving as Minister of Communication and Works. Unfortunately, this didn't last long. Why? Because of communism. Yes, the Cold War was in full swing, and the PPP's leftist ideology did not sit well with Britain. After only 133 days in office, in October 1953, the British government suspended the constitution and kicked them out. And the British were very proud of this fact that they kicked them out. In fact, you can, as you can see here. Attention focuses on Georgetown, the elegant and spacious capital of British Guiana, as the British government takes action to halt the growth of communism in the country. At his residence, the governor, Sir Alfred Savage, here with his wife, directs the maintenance of law and order in the country, now that the constitution has been suspended. In the harbour, ships of Her Majesty's Navy ride at anchor, and Guianese children stare with wonder at this new sight. No, <laughs> oh gosh, you're going to have the British come after me. Okay, the British are coming. They, so yeah, clearly you don't make a video unless you're proud of what you're doing. Then, out of fear that they would spark political unrest, Kwayana and others were detained by the British Army. In 1957, Kwayana left the PPP over disagreements over whether or not Guyana should choose to join the West Indian Federation. He was actually a deep supporter of the concept, as he was also one of the original intellectual authors of the Pan-African movement in the Caribbean. So much so that in the 1960s, he founded the first Pan-Africanist organization in the Caribbean, ASCRIA. That is the African Society for Cultural Relations with Independent Africa. Because of the People's National Congress's Afrocentric stance at the time, Ascria joined forces with them until 1971 when he, Yusi Kawanya, was expelled from the party. Why was he expelled? Well, it's because he called for shared governance. Now that's a word that's thrown around a lot nowadays. He was probably one of the first persons in Guyana to actually call for that. He called for a new political system of joint ruling between the two leaders of the two major ethnic groups, the Indo and Afro-Guyanese, with a partition along ethnic lines 
as a last resort if such negotiations failed. But by recognizing that a racial divide even existed in Guyana, the PNC subsequently accused him of being a racist and dismissed him and the idea, both from the party. In 1974, Ascria joined forces with the Working People's Vanguard Party, the Indian Political Revolutionary Associates, and Ratun to create the Working People's Alliance, a political pressure group that became a political party in 1979. This is the party that famed Pan-African scholar the late Walter Rodney eventually joined. Kwayana served in parliament for several years before he retired in 2002 and in June of that year, he migrated to San Diego, California, where he currently lives. At 94 years old, he still resides in the US. But perhaps one of Kwayana's least known accomplishments is the fact that he wrote the anthems for the PPP, Old Fighting Men, the PNC, the battle song, and the WPA, People Power. As a writer, he also had a pivotal role in the founding of each of these parties' newspapers as well, which then, as a consequence, also had a greater influence on the national media. However, in a tribute to UC Koyana, WPA executive member Dr. David Hines said that UC's impact in Ghana went well beyond politics. He said, when African Guyanese now give their children African names and Guyanese no longer make fun of those names, we must trace that back to UC Kwayana, who through the African Society for Cultural Relations with Independent Africa, launched the cultural revolution that introduced the level of self-love that African Guyanese now take for granted. So when we celebrate Emancipation Day, as part of the national norm in Guyana, we must know that that celebration as an institution is the result of Kweyana's cultural revolution. With the nation experiencing such racial divisiveness, suspicion, and vitriol, it is good for us to remember persons who have made positive contributions to the culture of Guyana. So if you're watching this and you know the man personally, tell him that we want to meet him. We'll be sure to thank you on this show. And because of all the reasons that I've listed and more, I really think that he is a person that deserves far more recognition than he currently gets. What do you think? I want to hear it. So leave your comments below. And also, if you have someone who you think we should feature, let us know in the comments as well. Until next time, if you're contributing to your nation's history, you're doing it for the culture.